Okay, so let's continue on here and let's look at arrays um, with some examples. Let this, so I think this will help let, uh, sink in. Uh, and I'm going to show you two examples in this video. I'm going to show how to calculate an average, um, an average with the data input into an array. Could be something like the average grade in a class or something. As a, um, it's kind of connected to the real world, as well as find the uh, maximum number in an array. So that would be something like uh, find the top grade in a class, something along those lines. All right. Now, I would recommend a lot of times that when you're given a, a problem or you're trying to think of through a problem is that you really don't rush into coding it initially. Think through the algorithm, the process, like the step-by-step -step way in which you want to, how to want to approach it. Thinking like a computer, right, trying to think algorithmically in which you're thinking step-by-step, -step, what's the process, the sequence of events that needs to take place in order to get the um, end result. So um, what we're going to have for calculating the average grades in a class, right, is we're going to we're going to do this where we're going to populate. We're going to assume that we're going to do this in a way in which we're populating and storing the information in an array. All right. So we're going to have an array declared. Okay. Um, and we're going to, in this case, I'm just assuming um, that we've got six, a class of size six. Okay. And we're going to have some um, information, right? We're de so we've declared an array, then we're going to have it initialized. I'm just going to kind of make up some numbers in here, right? Um, obviously, there are, these are real small numbers, not like real grades. Um, and if we want to calculate an average of a bunch of numbers in an array, well, how are we going to do that, right? Well, we're going we're gonna to have to do is we're going to have to walk the array, iterate the array, Right, and we're going to calculate a, a sum, right? We're going to initialize a, some variable sum to zero, okay? And we're going to continue to, as we walk through the array, right, to, to add to the sum, okay? And so on down the entire array, okay? Until we get, um, the last thing we'll do is we'll calculate the average based on dividing the sum uh, by the number of elements that are in the array. So we've, we've looked at calculating an average before, but it's a little bit different in this context because we're, we're storing the information in an array. Okay, so that's a quick breakdown. Now let, let's go to the code. Let's actually code this up. Okay, so um, I'll assume that the, the grades can be doubles. Okay, um, and I'm going to, let's, let's uh, let, allow the user to enter the, the um, the number of grades. Okay. So we're going to allow the, uh, the user to enter the number of grades. Okay. Um, and now we're, so we've declared it based on what the user entered, the size. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do Right is let's uh, so this is we're using this to declare right. I can make some intelligent use of comments here by saying declare array based on user entered size. Now I want to point out here that when we talk about comments, when we talk about comments, we don't want to just comment every line, right? Comments are meant to make the code easier to read, and you know you have a like four lines of code here. It's nice to just summarize what that block of four lines of code is doing. Right, um, and so maybe the next thing I want to do here is to initialize the array. Okay, and we're gonna see like in a in a previous video we looked at the a pattern that is common for iterating through an array where the for loop looks like this, where we start counting at zero and we go to less than the size. Okay, and I'm gonna have the user. I'm gonna ask the user to um, um, to enter each grade. I'm going to do this a little bit different too. I'm going to, I'm going to specify which part of the array um, we're going to be entering. So it's to enter grade or grades um, and then whatever the index is. So I'll put I here. You'll see how this works when we, when we print it out. And so we're going to need to then do scanf. We're going to get a double from the user and I'm going to do just like I would have done previously with a variable here, except in this case, it's a particular location in the 
array. Okay, so it looks just like what we've used scanf before, except we since it's an array, we're going to have the, uh, the we have to specify which element, which which number in the array do we want to, which location in the array do we want to um, write to here based on the user entering that information. Once we have that, okay, once we have the array initialized, now, okay, we're going to calculate the average. Now, I know we could have calculated the average like as the user was typing it in, okay, but I want to do this in a way where we're, we're showing how we're, we're initializing an array, then we're doing something with it, and then we're going to go ahead and um, print it back out. Okay, so now I'm going to calculate the average. And I could follow that same pattern that we saw before. Okay, right, where we're walking every single element in the array. And I'm going to keep track of a sum. Okay, where sum is for each, right, we're going to continue adding to it as we walk each element in the array, each element in the array. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average. Okay, we're going to calculate the average here. Um, and that's effectively going to be sum divided by the size that was entered. Okay, now, I don't have to worry about data types here because everything we're looking at things like doubles, right? The, it's an array of doubles, sum is a double. So if I have a double divided by an integer, size is an integer, it's still a double, right? So there's no information lost uh, with any sort of type conversion issues. Uh, and then it, let's just go print the average out to the screen. Okay, so I'm going to compile this and run it and let's um, Okay, go ahead and we'll run it. Enter number of grades, five, right? And notice that because how I did the uh, print F here with the percent DI, it's actually gonna give me which location in the array out to the console. Uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll plop in a few things here, different grades, right? Um, we'll do another, okay. Just testing something that uh, you know that we know that the answer um, being 75. Now let's we'll put the, everything looks correct and just to test um, it, it works, but just to test that everything works correctly, I'm gonna I'll put in something that's not gonna end so um, nice and neat so that we can test uh, what happens when we have um, you know that we're effectively not having anything lost in the data conversion issues. Okay. All right, so that's how to calculate the average, and I would, I would, I'm going to show you another example that kind of builds on this uh, of some of what we've already used. Now, I would emphasize. Now, I know I did that quickly, so anything that was confusing in terms of how that logic works, I recommend just kind of going back in the video, rewatch it, right? Um, rather than me repeating it here, it's usually easier to go ahead and do that. Okay, the next thing I want to show you here is. Uh, what if we wanted to, instead of finding the average, or maybe in addition to finding the average, we wanted to find the largest number of the array, or it could also be maybe we wanted to find the smallest item in the array, right? Maybe we want the maximum and the minimum numbers, right? Let's focus on the largest first. Um, it's really the same idea for the smallest. Um, let's find the best grade in the class, right? The best grade in the class. Well, how would we do that? Um, let's think about the process. And a matter of fact, I'm going to come back to this because I already drew something, right? If we wanted to, um, eh, you know what, uh, the largest, this one's all the way at the end. Let's find one that's a little bit more interesting. Um, if we wanted to find the largest number in an array, okay, imagine this is our array, okay? And again, I, re I really recommend drawing these things out and thinking step by step what the process is before uh, trying to code it. I will say that 90% of the time when someone has a problem and they're in my office uh, looking at some and trying to uh, tackle some coding issue, unless it's a very clear bug or something very, very specific, um, the overwhelming majority of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, if we draw out on the whiteboard what the step-by-step, -step, what the process looks like to have a conceptual understanding of how to solve the problem, right? Independent of actually writing the code that tends, 
that tends to click and, and solve the student's problem. So um, I, I would recommend don't jump right into coding. Sometimes you get tunnel vision if you do that. It's better to think about the problem, have a strategy, and then go and code the thing. So I'm trying to show you that drawing this now is, is kind of alluding to that. When you think about it, if you're trying to think like the computer and you want to find the largest number here, okay, what makes sense to do is keep track of a maximum number, right? Keep track of the maximum number. So maybe the first thing that we do is we're going to initialize maximum to the first thing that we see, which is 2, right? And then we go to the next location here and we say, hey, is that bigger than our current maximum? Well, 4 is bigger than 2, so we say, okay, well, 2 is not the maximum number. 4 is the biggest one we found so far. Okay. Then we go here and we say, well, is 8 bigger than 4? Yes, it is. So we're going to store 8 here. Okay. And then we go here, we say, well, is 1 bigger than 8? No. So 8 is still our current maximum. We go here, say, is 5 bigger than 8? No. So 8 is still our current maximum. And we say, okay, once we hit the end of the array, we know that 8 is the largest number in the array. Same thing in kind of the opposite way with uh, finding the minimum. All right, so let's actually code that. Let's do that. And um, if we go ahead, let's come back here. I'm going to leave the same example. Um, let's do, um, I'll do it right here. We could do it before or after we calculate the average. It really doesn't matter. Let me show you an example of, of doing that where we're finding the uh, minimum. Or I'm sorry, find the max number in the array. Okay, and what I want to do then is going to say, well, let's keep track. Let's assume that the maximum, let's make an assumption that the maximum, um, the, we initialize it to the very first thing, right? The very first thing, uh, first grade, in location zero, okay? And then I'm going to have our array walk or iterate every other Right, we can start at one. Actually, if you start at zero, you're still going to get the same thing. Um, it just doesn't, you don't need to, right? You're just checking the same thing twice. Um, and we're going to look to see if any of the other grades is greater than the maximum. Okay, if it is, our max becomes that current grade. Okay, and then we're going to print out max number or max grade is and let's go ahead and print that out all right so let's test it testing is a very important part of the process it, bugs happen they happen all the time uh the general rule is if you don't test something it's going to not work okay um so let's try five let's say um do something where maybe the maximum's in the middle here um, okay, so it should print out 95, and it does. Okay. Um, all right. So that's a couple examples. And like I was saying before, I know I'm going through those examples quick, but I also know that you have, you have the ability to go back and rewatch them. So I'd rather make the video short and allow you the ability to do that rather than um, repeating things over and over again. Um, so I, I highly recommend to do that if that applies to you. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching and we can move on to the next video.